All right, everybody, so welcome back to another Friday Night Magic Tournament at Lost Legion Games and Comics in South Charleston, West Virginia. My name, as always, is Zachary Evans, and we are already into our round one feature match. On the left, stream regular Scotty Wright piloting his uh, typical weapon of choice, that being Junk Aristocrats, and his opponent, Aaron Daly, who's playing a mono-white uh, humans deck, for all intents and purposes, white weenie. So two archetypes that these two gentlemen are known for squaring off here in our first round feature match like i said a little bit earlier off camera the relatively low turnout tonight so we're only doing four rounds of swiss and no top eight so it'll just be four rounds tonight which as someone who has been up since five this morning traveling for work i'm not going to uh, be entirely upset about that Plus, we do have our Star City Games Invitational Qualifier tomorrow. So we'll be back here for streaming that as well. So the extra rest certainly won't hurt. Meanwhile, let's get back to the action here. Scotty started on a turn one Doom Traveler and a turn two Blood Artist. Then followed it up with the front half of Lingering Souls and another Doom Traveler. So his board is uh, quite impressive here. And he can start serving in with his flyers and the Doom Traveler on board, uh, giving him a lot of reach. He's going to go ahead and flash back that Lingering Souls, and I apologize in advance for the glare, which is at the bottom of the feature match area, as the light above the feature match area, which has been burnt out for many months, <laughs> which eliminated the possibility of glare, has been fixed. So it is a much brighter, warmer room out there, but that does have the side effect of causing us a little bit of problems. Meanwhile, Aaron has landed two Boros Elite and a Thalia, and follows up with the turn four Riders of Gavany. I assume he's going to name Spirits, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. And it is, in fact, Spirits, so Scotty will be unable to block with his Lingering Souls tokens. And he'll be unable to block with the tokens that the Doom Travelers generate. So these are simply chump blocks as uh, Battalion Triggers on the Boros Elite, giving them, making them 3-3s three equivalent. It's going to take two from Thalia, but he's going to gain two off of the Doom Traveler triggering his Blood Artist. So it's a net wash, and Scotty adds to his Air Force. To clarify, answer a question in the chat, Scotty did win uh, the M14 game day last weekend with this Junk Aristocrats deck. Again, a somewhat poorly attended event, which is uh, results number one of the PTQ that was in Columbus on the same day, as well as the simple fact that in the dog days of summer, ahead of the fall block, during the core set, notoriously low attendance for Magic tournaments. This is the uh, summer doldrums. We will definitely expect to see an increase in participation once Theros lands. So there's an imposing sovereign. And Aaron's going to serve in with his uh, with his Boros Elite, his Thalia and his Riders of Gavany, which is Vigilant. He's going to take, uh, Scotty's going to take eight. He's going to lose seven because the Blood Artist trigger is going to net him one. But uh, Aaron adding a fairly sizable... Ground force to his board state here. The Sovereign keeping any jump blockers that Scotty could uh, possibly land somewhat irrelevant as they'll come into play tapped, and Scotty is dead on board, remembering that he cannot block any of the attacks from Aaron's all human uh, offense because of Riders of Gavany naming Spirit. So Scotty in a spot here, and he just scoops him up, unable to. Uh, Unable to deal the final three points of damage. Unable to do any chump blocks because of protection. 
And Aaron Daly off the uh, strength of a pretty impressive curve out. Takes game one in this battle of aggro decks with little white creatures in it. So we want to take this opportunity, like we do each and every week, to thank the fine folks here at Lost Legion Games and Comics in beautiful downtown South Charleston, West Virginia, for letting us stream their FNM and for hosting great magic tournaments throughout the year. Lost Legion has four locations in West Virginia, in Princeton, Beckley, South Charleston, and Parkersburg, which are all a convenient drive away from places like Columbus, Pittsburgh, Blacksburg, Roanoke, Lexington, and Cincinnati, and Morgantown. So if you're ever in this area, be it for work or pleasure, make sure you check in at one of their stores for great prices, good people, and who knows, you might just find your way onto our feature match camera. So let's get down to the real business of the matter. Tomorrow, starting at noon Eastern, is our Star City Games Invitational Qualifier, the second such event that we've run at the store, the last one being in April, where we had 52 participants. Hopefully we have a comparable number tomorrow, so if you're watching uh, locally or you're watching regionally and have the opportunity to come down, support the store, and quite possibly win yourself $250 in cold hard cash and invitation to a Star City Games Invitational. Make sure you head this way. The event starts at 12 noon, but registration will start at 11. Recommend everybody who is coming to get here early so you can get yourself situated before the event starts, as it will be a rather prompt start at noon. It's a $25 cash tournament. Format is standard, so everyone should have a deck ready to go. The first place winner does get $250 in cash and the invite to an SCG Invitational later in the year. There are the pack prizes for the top eight. The top eight also receiving exclusive playmats in the top eight pin, as well as Star City Games Open Series points, which you can use later to qualify for an Invitational the hard way if you want to. Additional prizes if we get a, a significant turnout. I'm pretty sure we're going to check another box in there if we get up to 60. Um, We'll just have to wait and see who make, who shows up. For more information, go to lostlegiongames.com or head over to our website for the stream at uh, zacksellsmagic.com. And as always, if you're physically unable to make it, possibly because there is a large body of water called the Atlantic Ocean between you and the store, that is perfectly understandable. But you can watch all of the coverage live streaming right here from the Magic Broom Closet, twitch.tv. Slash Zach Sells Magic. I cannot rec uh, cannot encourage you guys enough. If you are local uh, or you are regional, make sure to head out this way and support the store. Should be fun. I don't think we're going to have the same numbers as we did last time, but uh, I still think we'll have a, a very decent turnout. And again, somebody's going to win two hundred fifty dollars in cash, so you can't shake a stick at that. So these guys are uh, still shuffling up here. Again, like I said, not a, not a great turnout tonight. My camera's not working. That can't be good. Let's see if I can if I can fix this bad boy. Mm -hmm. There we go. So yeah, not a lot of turnout tonight at the shop. Not a lot of turnout in the stream necessarily, though it is early. The camera's still acting up. It's just not my day today. It's been a very long day, and it will continue to be long up until the end of this tournament, at which point I will go home for a brief respite and be back here tomorrow for even more coverage of more magic. So obviously tomorrow it's an atypical uh, broadcast time for us as it is a Saturday afternoon event, but we will be covering all that event. I can guarantee you tomorrow that the uh, quality of magic will be... Uh, not necessarily higher tier than, than what we normally have, as most of our ringers here will be playing as well. But there will be a lot of guys from uh, outside of our normal shop area coming in to try and grind out their value on the event. So we should have some pretty good matches. So even if you can't watch live, uh, we'll have those videos up on YouTube probably Sunday night or Monday. Um, so definitely check those out. While you're over there, feel free to subscribe to our channel. I did want to say, uh, mention it on our Facebook page, which is at facebook.com slash zacksellsmagic, but uh, earlier this week we hit two uh, pretty sizable milestones. We hit 1,400 subscribers on our YouTube channel, so thanks to all of you who have uh, subscribed there and support our stream in the after-the-fact fashion, and we also hit 700 likes on our Facebook page, so thanks again for everyone who participates in the discussions there. There's daily content. Uh, we've been posting a lot recently of uh, people's card alters, a lot of news about... Uh, upcoming spoilers for Theros and other products, so 
definitely check that out. Bookmark it, like it, support the stream in any way that you can. So Aaron haven't taken game one. Looks like he's sending back for a fresh six. Scotty's still thinking about his. Looks like he's on a keep. It's very interesting to see that the we started doing this uh, stream last August, right at the very end of the month, and uh, it was very interesting to chart the change in the number of participants at our FNMs. We went from an average of 20 to an average of 30, then 35, and then for about six weeks in a row we had over 40 and uh, 1.50 players. Uh, then after the uh, holidays there in January or February, the numbers started to dip down. And then now, as we've gotten into late summer, they've dipped down as well. So it's very interesting to see how that cycle tends to go for Magic. But uh, it is also not uncommon, as it is a function of the sets and when they're printed and when they're released. A lot of people are tapped out financially. There are big events like Gen Con going on in Indianapolis. So a lot of competing things. Uh, college, like I said, colleges have started back up, so we've lost some players to their uh, collegiate towns. But we will maintain our ever-vigilant presence here at the store and at the stream. So don't uh, don't give up on us just yet. Do have some uh, interesting things coming up um, for those of you who've been watching lately. I've mentioned a couple times, both here on the stream and on our Facebook page, that uh, on September 13th, so uh, I think four weeks from today, we will be celebrating the official one-year anniversary of the stream, both here in the store and as well with some giveaways on our various forms of social media. So uh, make sure that you're uh, up to date and following us on Twitter and YouTube, on Twitch and on Facebook. It will be giving away uh, a lot of cool stuff. We've got some altered cards to give away, some uh, promos. Uh, we've got a new Lost Legion playmat that we're going to give out. There's a lot of other stuff that I'm working on. So. Uh, Make sure you get in on that here in a month or so. Looks like Aaron has found a five-card hand that he's content with. No one drops from either player, but Aaron adds to the board first with a precinct captain. Interesting to see what the cards are in Scotty's hands. We see a uh, it looks like a Blood Baron, which is pretty brutal in this matchup as Aaron is a mono white deck and will not in any way be able to remove it. He can overwhelm it, but it's going to be difficult to beat the 4-4 uh, Pro White Lifelinker. Looks like Scotty's hand is otherwise packed with a lot of removal. So we see Tragic Slip and I think a, uh, a Doom Blade as well. And there is the Doom Blade. Well, no, it looks like Aaron does have a Ratchet Bomb, which he brings in primarily to deal with, uh, primarily to deal with the tokens out of Scotty's deck, but it will give him some uh, ability to deal with that Blood Baron, although that's a very slow clock to get rid of that. Interesting choice there by Aaron to play the Silver Blade after combat, and I think the reason he's doing so is so that uh, should Scotty have a removal spell, he's more tempted to use it on the much uh, more expendable Precinct Captain as opposed to the rather game-breaking Silver Blade Paladin. Unfortunately, a backup Tragic Slip spoils those plans as well, so Scotty has dealt with the better part of uh, Aaron's offense already. And there we see a Life Bane Zombie come down. Offering up a Fiend Hunter, and uh, I'm not sure what that other card is, to be quite honest. A Retro Bomb, a Fiend Hunter, and a card that I can't make out. It might be a Riders of Gavany. Unfortunately, like I said, we do have some glare issues tonight. And he took the unknown card. Let me confirm what that was. And it was, in fact, a Riders of Gavany, which we saw in Game 1, Scotty's deck uh, 
It has a tough time beating if it's resolved and Scotty doesn't draw removal for it. And there is the Ratchet Bomb. It'll be very interesting to see if uh, Aaron blows that for zero to clear out those tokens before Scotty plays a threat that he'd much rather, or that Aaron would probably be much rather, uh, I'm stumbling over my words, that he would much rather save the Ratchet Bomb for. So there's a Blood Artist. Aaron choosing not to pop the Ratchet Bomb in response as the other half of Lingering Souls is in the bin, so Aaron's just going to take five. Dropping the 15 is the first damage of the game. Looks like Scotty's hand is Archangel of Thune, Voice of Resurgence, Abrupt Decay, and I may have misspoken. There may not have been a, a Blood Baron in his, uh, in his hand. There are a lot of cards in Scotty's deck that look, at first glance, like a Blood Baron. And in response to putting a counter on it, Scotty is going to abrupt decay it, so... Aaron losing his pr uh, his primary answer to Scotty's token strategy. You do see him draw another Fiend Hunter here, so he's probably going to Fiend Hunt the uh, Blood Artist. No, oh, he's taking the uh, Lifebane Zombie, which seems like a... Risky choice, given the fact that if the Fiend Hunter dies, he's still going to get another uh, trigger off of the uh, Lifebane Zombies into the board ability. And there we see the Archangel of Thune. A flying lifelinker that serves as an anthem effect whenever Scotty gains life. So that in combination with the uh, Blood Artist is going to be pretty brutal. But there's another Fiend Hunter off the top, allowing Aaron to take care of that situation. So Scotty's hand is a Voice of Resurgence and an unknown card. I believe it's a land. Oh, it may be a Verils. No, it's a Cartel Aristocrat. So Aristocrat comes into play, tapped because of Imposing Sovereign. And he's going to serve in for two. I guess the choice here is he going to flash back the Lingering Souls, cast his voice, or just sit on the board presence he has. There's an argument to be made for not adding to this board, as Scotty's pretty well ahead as it is. But he does in fact choose to roll out the voice of resurgence. I guess Aaron's deck is not really playing sweepers, as he doesn't have blue, so he can't play Supreme Verdict, and it's very unlikely that Aaron's deck which probably has 30 creatures in it, is going to be playing... It's going to be playing, uh... Terminus. So O-Ring, targeting the Voice of Resurgence in response. Scotty is going to sack it to the, uh... Scotty looking for a Voice of Resurgence token in the provided a token box, but unfortunately I do not have one. So saving him some time looking for it. The scroll token will suffice. Aaron serving in with his team. Trying to get some offense online. Now we see Scotty go full bore. Flashing back Lingering Souls and playing a top decked Doom Traveler. So Scotty just on board can do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 8 damage just off of Blood Artist triggers. So he attacks for 5 here and he should be good. So the voice token by itself is lethal. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That is 12 exactly, so he doesn't even need to activate his Aristocrat and get his Blood Artist triggers. 12 damage just from those attacking creatures, and with Aaron tapped out, and only a lonely O-ring there at the bottom, that should be enough. And I think the, discre the discrepancy there was Aaron uh, forgot briefly that that was a... Uh, 
forgot that was a voice resurgent token. It was not, in fact, a 1 1 squirrel. Guys, I get a confirmation that there's 30 minutes left in the round. I apologize, guys. It is just me in the, uh, in the quote unquote studio tonight. As, uh, obviously, there's only so, only 12 people playing. There's not a lot of people here. And, uh, Yin, who normally co-commentates, or at least has in the last few weeks, is on location in Miami. I believe he had a job interview down there this week. So he's out of town, and then Garrett had to work late, so it's just me. I believe Zach Villianco is getting ready to go back to college this weekend. So just a busy time for a lot of us here at the store. Let's see what's going on in the chat. Nothing is going on in the chat. So I'll just do my best to kill time here. As we move to Game 3 in a Round 1 feature match with uh, Scotty Wright and his Junk Aristocrats deck, drawing even with uh, Aaron Daly and his Mono White Humans deck. Last weekend, you may have heard us talk about it on the stream. You may have seen us there in person, but we did head over to the PTQ run by Comic Town in Columbus, Ohio. Had uh, 210 players vying for that uh, plane ticket to Dublin, Ireland for Pro Tour Theros, which was... Uh, Great turnout for that event, and uh, Yin Garrett and Jonathan Wright were there playing in the event, and I was working at the AffinityForCards.com booth, which is a good reminder to uh, head over there to AffinityForCards.com and check out their deals on Magic Singles. Obviously, we try to encourage people to support their local game store, but we all know that there are cards that you need that are not available in your local brick-and-mortar store, so head over to AffinityForCards.com and use coupon code LOSTLEGION, all one word, and you'll get 5% off your first order. You got some pretty good deals there. They were selling some, I can uh, attest firsthand that uh, they were selling some cards at very good prices this past Saturday. Uh, every single card in the case significantly under TCG minimums. Hey, Jonathan. Now joined by Jonathan Wright. What did you play, uh, or, did play or, or how did you do? I should say. I won. Two zero. You won two zero. And what were you playing? Did I see you sleeping up terminuses? Yes. Are you playing Esper Control? Blue white. Blue white. What happened to your red? Mm. Oh, I built a Geist deck last night. Uh oh. No, Geist deck with it. terminus. No, no, it's not the deck, obviously. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, for a minute there, I was very, I was no, very no, no, concerned. No. It's control. We were just talking, uh, we're watching your brother and Aaron play here. We are just talking briefly about uh, the PTQ last weekend. And how it was uh, a good time was had by all. I am, I am. people are probably tired of me talking about how much I enjoy Comic Town run events, but from your opinion, was it as a, yeah, it's very... So I, went, I went there and I had an open trial there once and it was really well run too. Yeah. I had a lot of people too, they had a draft open trial going on and a... Sander won, both had like 25 players. Really they had nice. 210 for the PTQ this weekend. Yeah. That's a that's a significant... I guess 230. You guess 230? Who was the guest? Hmm. I don't remember what was... <laughs> uh, it was something that Carl was half asleep, I don't remember. Oh. Yin, Yin was full asleep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here's Every what time you I look back to say something. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what you need to know about stream regular Yin Sang. If you go on a road trip with Ian, he will be asleep before you leave the county line. Yeah. And he will not wake up until you get to where you're going. And if he does wake up because you intentionally wake him up, he will fall asleep immediately. <laughs> but it was a good event. There was... Yin uh, narrowly missed uh, winning a box. Yeah. Top 16 got boxes. He, he did finish X in 2, which was good enough for 16th place, but he uh, got shut in on tiebreakers, I believe. Yeah, he finished 9th. Ninth... So either way, another deep run by uh, by Yin. He's gone deep in a lot of tournaments. He always, he always starts out well, and then something well, he... happens. He plays Jund yeah, he all the time, really and, he's, well. and he plays it very well. Yeah. That's pretty good. There were four vendors there, Empire, Alter Reality, Matt Cranstuber, and then, of course, Affinity for Cards. Of course, Comic Town was there running the event. Very, very cool uh, cool event. So we'll, I uh, talked to the guys from Comic Town to make sure that they kept me in the loop for all of their uh, upcoming events so that we... Uh, because for all intents and purposes, any of those bigger events that happens in Columbus, that might as well be our home 
yeah. home field. An area. So there's no real reason not to uh, kind of collaborate with them. Plus, Comic Town's a nice place to play. There's a lot of places to play in Columbus, and I would have, heavily recommend. Hmm? Are there? Yeah, there's three or four no, places. I think I'll live in there. I'm up there all the time, though. So what was the final count? 11 or 12? Do you know? I think it was 11. 11? Yeah. It's brutal. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out exactly why. I know, like, you, you lost... Pissed huh? off not being able to park anywhere? No, I don't think that's it. There is a, yeah, the, the town in which the, uh, the the store is located is having their week-long, like, street fair, like, carnival, like, sell like Charleston day, tomorrow, I think, <laughs> conveniently. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so parking, the, the road that the store is on is closed for parking, but that's, you can easily does park. It start, though? Is it all day? It starts around, like, lunch. Oh, okay, so it starts so, around when IQ start. Yeah, but, I mean, everyone who's coming to the IQ should already be yeah, here. Yeah, right, they're going to be around yeah. 30 to 11. And it's good for the IQ because then when you O2 drop the IQ, you can go get a funnel cake. Enjoy a carnival. <laughs> you can go, you can go get a bouncy house. Yeah. All right, so we are back to uh, game three here, the decider in this round one feature match. Aaron on the play, finding a turn one champion of the parish. Naked Carto. But, uh, no, a turn turn two uh, champion of the parish. We're going to see a... Precinct cat. Going to pump our champion, which is very relevant because it's very unlikely that Scotty is going to uh, trade in this spot. It would be silly for Aaron not to attack, right? Yeah. I mean, Aaron. Aaron is not necessarily. I mean, he may not. It takes a lot of playing against that deck to realize how much they value their sack outlets. Yeah. But he's playing a different version today. It's more. Uh, doesn't have brawls. It's ooze based. And oh, scavenging ooze. Yeah, scavenging. Two scavenging ooze. Is this someone's list, or is this something no, he's working on? Todd's. Todd. 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 He's, he's on first name basis with him now. Yeah. It's Todd. I saw that he's Chick playing... Todd, in in uh, game two, he played Archangel of Thune. Is that a main deck card in this deck now? Uh, I think he has two in there, yeah. I mean, if you're playing Scavenging Ooze, I imagine the Archangel's a lot better. Yeah, it seems a lot more mid-range and consistent. So we're getting uh, a pass back to uh, Aaron here who casts a Silverblade Paladin, pumping his champion and pairing it with his champion. So there's a Doomblade here, right? Yeah. So in this this turn, he decides he's going. He's willing to trade his Precinct Captain with the... Oh, the Precinct Captain is first, right? Oh, that's right. So that's not as uh, money as aggressive as I thought. So it's kind of obviously loading up some kind of removal spell, just trying to decide what he wants to kill. Is that, is that Jordan's kid out there? Yes. <laughs> going nuts? That's awesome. Um, so Scotty's obviously thinking about something here. Or is he thinking about just chump blocking? Like, is his hand that bad? To, well, I mean, he doesn't have he, any he, he blocks anymore. He molt, he molt to six, right? Uh, it was six or five. I don't know, that might have been pretty smart by Aaron to leave back his champion. Maybe Scotty would have made that trade. Since yeah, well, it's definitely... I mean, he doesn't have any creatures to protect it. Anyway, I would think, so. like, the majority of the time, you probably do want to attack there, yeah. but you're right, it's not a clear, clear message. If, uh, if Scotty's... I mean, if you have Silver Blade Paladin in your attack, yeah. you're double yeah, it's Sorry, probably... It's even better. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, and also, too, you can't... It's a factor of what's in Aaron's hand as to how all-in he is on that champion of the parish. Like, if he doesn't have a... If that's his primary win condition, you know, that he probably wants to save it around. Whereas if Scotty doesn't have any way of dealing with it in his hand, he's more likely to throw it in front of it. So that is a, a good point. So it's a 3-3 champion of the Paris, which is a double striking because of the pair with Silverblade Paladin. And then a uh, the Precinct Captain is 2-2, and it makes a 1-1 uh, one, one one, if he attacks. When it hits. Yeah, when it, when it uh, does damage, I should say. So Scotty got a real thinker here. Text to Scotty right. Hurry up. Every, <laughs> every, uh, did you really send it? Yes, I did. Let's see what, let's see if he answers it. It's been a while. <laughs> oh my god, mom, Jonathan told me to hurry up. Hello. I want to see if he uh, answers it. Oh, oh yep. I thought he was doing Oh, so he has an abrupt decay? You abrupt decay... Yeah, it's really a tough spot, because they're all good targets. <laughs> you abrupt decay the, uh, oh, are we going to get a... Oh. Brave the Elements. <laughs> 
Ray of the Elements, it doesn't matter. I was wondering what he was targeting, but it doesn't really matter at this point, does it? Really and and that's the thing, too. People forget about how good... Well, people forget that they reprinted Brave the Elements. They also forget how good that card is. That card is a falter. That card is a counterspell. Do they have the life total? Yes, it's at 12. Did. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's really good. And then uh, Scotty choosing not to uh, block with his Cartel Aristocrat. So he's down to 12. He's down to 10 now. Oh. There's a life pain zombie, but it might be too late. This gas is about gone. Getting a champion... And the planes, the yep. champion, not not really irrelevant at this point. Mm -hmm. It does give him a blocker here, but uh, none of his blocks are very good. As even that one one the one soldier token trades with uh, Feeling, you know, naming cartel aristocrat. Uh, it might be Soren. Oh, uh, yeah, I would probably name cartel. Yeah, but you just attack with everything here. You just have to chump out the two double strikers, right? Where you can... I don't think... Yeah. You have no blocks. Everything is first strike. You're chumping everything. If you block the token, you just die. Mm -hmm. So you take one, two, three. Drops to seven. Make oh. another... T if he had a land and double ling or lingering souls flashback, he could hold on. I forgot how brave the element was. Oh. Great the Elements is a card I used to play in Standard. Uh, people forget, too, a white weenie deck with four main deck Brave the Elements and one of Pro Tour in Extended. Yeah. You remember that yeah, deck? That. that was a heck of a deck. Like, it was... But it's a, it's it's one of the most... It's one of the best utility spells you can imagine. It's everything for a white weenie deck. It's a contr it's a, it's the best mana tie that ever, you know what I mean? Mm. It's better than Cryptic Command when you use it in that kind of sense, you know what right. I mean? Pro all of your creatures, you know, blocks are horrible. I'm going to do some quick math here. Decide exactly how hard he's boned. <laughs> I mean, what can he do here? He has no sweeper out, right? Mm -hmm. I'm assuming the needle is on uh, Aristocrat. I'm not even going to bother oh, yeah. asking at this matter. point. In, in the first game, Scotty lost a game that he would normally win uh, because of a Gavini, Riders of Gavini naming Spirit. Ooh and an Imposing Sovereign. So, Scotty couldn't block with the blockers he had in place. Imposing Sovereign is good against Lingering Souls. It's very good. So, Scotty's got a Lingering Souls. Which he, he can cast both halves of it. Yep. Jumps all around. You can't let that Tracing Captain hit him, I don't think. Brave Elements wins here, too. Yes, it does. Oh. That'd be a good one. You can slam it. You might think about it just to make sure it's a... There is a famous Pro Tour play where someone gives a creature protection from the wrong color and loses the game because of it. It did involve uh, arcane spells from Kamigawa block. So he spliced a black spell into a green spell and then gave it Pro pro Black instead of Pro Green. Okay. So it's a little trickier than just like yeah. looking at a Same. bonfire of the damn saying Pro Blue. So you just jumped everything we'll trade with the yeah we'll trade with one token there we go. jump everything jump everything take one from a token yeah. and then scotty draws terminus oh gavity Archangel. archangel so he can uh so he can block something gain three right it's a three four mm-hmm there's no ring in Aaron's hand. The game is over. Right? Is it? Yep. Nope. Oh, Fiend Hunter oh. works just as well. <laughs> Scotty very hey, succinctly hey. enters the scoop phase, and now we will wait for, uh, to see if Scotty checks his phone to see if he got the uh, needling text message that you sent him about hurrying up. Uh, this is actually a pretty brutal matchup for Scotty uh, as, it, as it plays out. I think it's very close. It's not like it's one, one way is lopsided, but... Uh, mm -hmm. Scotty's uh, deck seems to have a hard time. a lot of chump blocking. Well, Aaron has a very aggressive curve, and if that curve does, yeah. in fact, curve out, as curves often do, yeah. uh, it's very tough for him to be. Imposing Sovereign, like you said, is brutal against Lingering Souls. Gavity making it completely irrelevant, you know. I mean, and you're... If you get your lifelink engine on, you're in a great spot, but you have to get there. And Aaron's playing a lot of removal. Like He's playing O-Rings, he's playing Fiend Hunters. You know, Fiend Hunter's in a good spot in this deck. 